welcome back to my channel. This is the place where I encourage you to find freedom and hope in God's truth. Today we're going to be talking about how to wait correctly for God and I'm going to give you four tips on how we can do this. Now the reason why I wanted to make this video is because last summer I was in a very difficult waiting period. I was constantly crying, I was constantly upset, I was constantly writing letters to God in my journal but I think the biggest problem of all was that I thought God must be frustrated with me. Now after my waiting period finally ended, I said to myself and I asked God, what could I have done to make this waiting period easier? And God reminded me of the story of David. Now if you don't know who David is, I'm going to give you the quickest synopsis of your entire life. But David was a shepherd's boy. He was told at the age of between 10 to 15 that he was going to become king of, of Israel. Now the thing God didn't tell him <laughs> between his ages is that how he was going to become king at the age of 30. So that meant that David waited between 15 and 20 years. 15 and 20 years in order for him to become king. And I really believe there are key things that he did in his life that allowed him to be patient and that allowed him to wait for God. And so if you're really excited about these four tips that I'm gonna share with you, please give me a thumbs up, subscribe down below, and also give me a comment at the end of the video which tip you found the most useful. Now the first thing that I want to remind you is that how this waiting period is a punishment. I want you to say this with me. God is not punishing me. God is not taking so long to give you an answer because you haven't prayed enough, because you've sinned too much, or because you've done, you haven't done something enough. You see, our Father in Heaven is a God who is intentionally in love with his children. And so this waiting period is a punishment. It's an opportunity. Now you may be asking me, what an opportunity to do what, Liz? An opportunity to build faith, to build patience, to make you understand that your faith isn't going to be determined by the size of the obstacle in front of you. Now I can't tell you how long God, God is going to give you an answer or when he's going to give you it. I'm not God, thank you Jesus, because I am far too sinful for that. But what I do know is that God will give you an answer when he sees it's fit. All you have to do is be patient, trust in him, lean on him. And I promise you that you begin to understand that, that this waiting period is a punishment. It's an opportunity for you to be used by God. Step number two, and this is to stay focused on God. In 1 Samuel chapter 16, verses 23 to 45, we read about David not only being a shepherd's boy, but he was also a harp player. He consistently worked on his gift and his talent of playing the harp. And this was so needed because when Saul needed someone in the palace to play for him in order to help defeat his bad moves, I really believe that how David put his harp on his back, he walked down to the palace and he went and played for Saul. Now the only reason why... David's playing made such an impact on Saul the way it did it's because David had a consistent relationship with God and he focused on the talent that God had placed in front of you and you have to do the same in your waiting period Satan likes to throw lies and distractions off you at you like God doesn't care about you God doesn't care about the desires of your heart God is punishing you but if you stay focused on those lies it will distract you from the vision that God is trying to place in front of you but by you keep your eyes up on Jesus it will change your entire perspective and you'll begin to not only realize that this waiting period is a punishment but you'll begin to focus on the things that God needs you to do now that could be anything it could be uni work it could be the ministry that God has asked you to lead or help to be a part of that church it could be school work it could just it could be just being a friend to the to your friendship group but really be able to reflect God's light there wherever you you are regardless of what it is God wants you to stay focused on it so that when he gives you the answer to the question that you've asked him for in your waiting period you'll be ready to go up and do exactly what he's asked you to do step number three and this is to lean on God in first Samuel chapter 17 starting from verse 41 we read the infamous story of David defeating Goliath with his few stones and his slingshot <laughs> 
Now, when David went into that fighting ring, Goliath looked at him and was like, you're not going to be able to defeat me with those silly weapons. But David had faith in his father in heaven that he was going to be able to kill Goliath. And when he did kill Goliath, he didn't claim to do it in his own strength. No, he claimed it and he relied and he leaned on God. And you have to do the same in your waiting period. Tell God all your frustrations, all your worries, all your discouragements, all your anxieties. Give it all to him. Because you see, Satan likes to prey on the weak. But when you give him all of your frustrations, you begin to become strong. And you start to realise that God is fighting your battle with you. He is in this with you and that you are not alone. Tip number four. And this is probably my favourite tip out of all of them. And this is community. In 1 Samuel chapter 19, we read about a beautiful friendship between Jonathan and David. Now, this friendship honestly reveals inside the chapter that they had to be best friends. Because when Saul, Jonathan, Jonathan's dad, wanted to kill David, Jonathan stopped it. He prevented David from being killed. That has to be a best friend type of friendship, right? And you need this type of friendship in your life. You need someone that you can go up to and be comfortable telling them your, your, your struggles, telling them your Christian struggles, telling them what help you currently need. Because you never know, they may have gone through a similar thing that you are currently struggling with and their testimony may be the exact encouragement that you need in order for you to get through your difficult period. So I really pray that you can find someone that can, that, can, that is able to walk this walk with you and was able to encourage you. Now it could be anyone, it could be your mum, it could be your dad, it could be your sibling, it could be a friend at church, it could be a mentor, it could be your pastor, regardless who it is. If you can't think of someone currently, just say a prayer, allow God to reveal someone to you and make sure that it's a person that you trust and that you're comfortable sharing with. Now these are all my four tips that I have to share with you. I really pray that you found at least one of them useful. But I also want to end this video saying that how waiting isn't easy. I know it isn't. I'm currently in a waiting period and I'm finding it difficult. But I reminded myself that how God is with me, that I am not alone, that he currently loves me and that he will give me an answer when he sees fit. I'm not saying that it's going to come tomorrow. It may take 15 years the way it took with David. But what I do remember is that how... I am his child and that he loves me. And so I really pray that these four tips just help to make your waiting period just a little bit easier. And if it has, then please um, comment below which tip that you found the most useful. Please, please give this video a thumbs up and please subscribe down below. I would love to you to be a part of this beautiful growing family. I love you so much. I thank you so much for watching. Stay blessed. See you next week. Hey everyone, this is Liz from the future, just letting you know that you've watched part one to our three part series all about waiting on God. Next week we're going to be answering the question, is God silent? And what we should do when God seems silent. And the week after we're going to be talking about how we can hear God's voice. So if you think any of these videos are going to be helpful and of use to you, why don't you subscribe, click the notification bell so that you are notified when these videos are posted. I'll see you next week, take care.